Now let us proceed with the other terminologies related to strain gauge. We have gauge creep. When the strain gauge is bonded to a test specimen and it is subjected to a constant strain, the gauge creep can happen. There will be an decreasing indicated value as the time progresses. This phenomena is represented by the figure here. Theoretically, this shall be the strain as measured from the test specimen. However, the strain was maintained constant over a period of time. Theoretically, if you maintain the strain, the integrated strain here shall remain constant as well and the line should be horizontal over a period of time. However, what was actually happening is that the indicated value reduces over time and reduces further and it goes back to zero strength. This is even though the constant strength still maintained within the specimen. In this case, what was indicated by the strain gauge does not fully represent the actual situations of the specimen. This will affect the results. Now the tendency of the gauge to creep increases. If the gauge length is shorter or if the strain gauge or adhesive absorb moisture or if the temperature increases. If you need to measure the strength of the specimen, which is likely to be held constant over a period of time, probably you can take this into the considerations. Use longer gauge length, do proper protections for the moisture, and ensure the temperature is not an issue with the testing. Next, we talk about the permissible current or we can say it is related to permissible voltage. The principle is this. The larger the current flow through a strain gauge, the larger the output voltage is obtained. However, the current generates heat. This changes the temperatures of the strain gauge. You know that strain gauge is susceptible to temperature. The temperature can lead to inaccurate measurement. Now the extent of this temperature effect is dependent on the test specimen material as well as the surface area of the strain gauge. And then the temperature can in turn change the resistance of the strain gauge. When the resistance change due to the increasing temperature, there will be reading in terms of the strength, even though no strength is applied. This goes back to the fundamentals of the measurements of a strain gauge. The strain gauge is actually measuring the change of electric resistance in order to quantify the strength. Now, even though there is no actual strength here, but there is a large current flowing through the strain gauge. This increases the temperature and subsequently changes the resistance. Now, as far as the measurements done by the strain gauge, there will be changes of resistance. That means the computations will give you changes of strength even though there is no strength axis. In order to avoid this, there is a limit in terms of the current, known as the permissible current. It was said that the extent of this effect is governed by the type of material of your test specimen. With that, the permissible current change accordingly. For metallic materials, the permissible current will be 30 mA. As for woods and plastic, the permissible current it will be 10 mA. I believe the differences is due to the ability 
of the test specimen to disperse the heat. If the heat can be quickly dispersed, faster than accumulations of the temperature caused by the current, then higher permissible current is allowed. Otherwise, the current will have to be remain low. I believe this is the reason. Next, we talk about the strength limit. This is referring to the maximum strength under which a strength gauge can operate under a given conditions without suffering damage. Every strength gauge has its own limit. Beyond this limit, the strength gauge will have damage and the result cannot be representing the actual situations of the member. Based on the definitions of TML, the strength limit is defined by the smallest value of mechanical strength at which the indicator strength exceeds the mechanical strength by 10%. What does it mean by this statement? Let us look at this diagram here. The y-axis represents the indicated strength. The x-axis it will be the mechanical strength. This is referring to the actual strength of the material. And this is representing the measured value. Now, if your measured value is totally identical to the actual situations, the line here it will be 1 to 1. For example, if the actual strength is 10% and the strength gauge is able to measure accurately, the indicated strength should also be 10%. This is the most ideal situation. You know that there may be some variations in terms of the measurement, as nothing is perfect. Now, in order to ensure the accuracy of the measurement, TML sets the limits of plus minus 10%. Beyond this plus minus 10%, that means the strength gauge does not serve its purpose. The measured value is too far away from the actual value. Now, how do we represent this plus minus 10%? For any value, you multiply 1.1 and 0 0.9. This form another two plots. And then you choose another point, multiply 1.1 and 0 0.9. That gives you another two plots. Connect the plots. You will get the line of plus 10% and minus 10%. This will determine the limits of the measurement. Now we'll go back to the fundamentals of the measurements of the strength gauge. When the strength gauge is elongated, there will be a change in terms of the cross-sectional area of the wires and the foil in the strength gauge. This going to leads to the changes of the resistance for the current. Based on the changes of the resistance, we are able to compute the strength of the material. Now, for every material here, when subjected to deformation, there is a limit. If the material is still within the elastic range, the changes of elongations will be proportional to the changes of the cross-sectional area. The principles of Poisson ratio shall apply. However, when the materials exceeded its yield point, plastic deformations occur. There will be a process of strength hardening and necking. Now, the changes of the cross-sectional area of the wire or the foil in the strength gauge will not be proportional to the elongation. This is going to affect the result as the measured changes of resistance is solely based on the cross-sectional area of the wire and the foil. With that, 
reaching to certain limit, the measurement becomes significantly deviated from the actual measurement. This brings to the situations of the variations in terms of the indicated strength versus the mechanical strength. What you see here, you have two types of strength gauge here. Before reaching the limit, the measurements can be quite accurate. However, starting from here, for this type of strength gauge, the deviation enlarge. Now, based on the definitions of TML, the limit was set at 10% variations. So, by the time the line here touches the 10%, this will be the limits for the strength gauge. And this limit is known as the strength limit. We have another type of strength gauge. This type of strength gauge can give you quite a good measurements until here. And then the variations enlarge. By the time the curve hit this 10% limit line, that will be the limits of this strength gauge. Now, if you look at these two type of strength gauge, the differences it will be their limits. This one is less than 10%, and this one is more than 10%, but less than 20% mechanical strength. Knowing their limits leads to the selections of suitable strength gauge for your testing. Now this FLA 5-11, which is known as the F-series strength gauge, is applicable for general uses. Taking steel bar as an example, a typical carbon steel yielded somewhere 10% of elongation. It could be slightly less than 10%. If you are measuring the elastic response of carbon steel, then you can use this. But if you want to measure the response of the carbon steel after yielding, this one will not be applicable. Even though you use this, there may be value, but the value will not be accurate. The variations can go beyond plus minus 10%. Now, if you wish to measure the carbon steel after yielding, then you will need to use YF series. As this strength gauge can go beyond 10% mechanical strength. That's why you need to know about the strength limit. Next, we talk about the fatigue limit or fatigue line. You know fatigue loads is related to repeated load over numerous times. Now, when strength is repeatedly applied to a strain gauge, that means the strength is applied on and off, on and off, and the amount of strength applied is relatively large, damages can occur and strain gauge become useless. When the strength is applied repeatedly at a large magnitude, either of this or one or more of these can happen. This include the strength resistance increases, the lead wire can disconnect, or the gauge can peel off. Any of this happen will give you inaccurate result or totally no result. Now, if your specimen is subjected to fatigue load, that means there will be changes of the strength over a period of time in numerous cycles, you will need to check for the fatigue limit. Now, what is fatigue limit? It is the number of repetitions under set conditions for the applied strain and repetition speed. That means we quantify the fatigue limit by the number of repetitions. The larger the fatigue load, the number of repetitions may reduce. Now, based on the definitions of TML, 
when the strain gauge is subjected to a constant mechanical strain which is applied repeatedly to the strain gauge the fatigue life it will be determined by 100 times 10 power of negative 6 strain which is in this line by the time this line is exceeded that means the fatigue life has reached as long as this line is not exceeded theoretically the applications of the strain gauge can be infinite in terms of the numbers or repetitions now these are the common situations if you apply cyclic strength at plus and minus 1500 strength the effective life it will be 10 power of 6 to 10 power of 7 cycles beyond that the result as acquired from the strength gauge cannot be used as it will not be accurate now if you apply the cycle strength to be less than 500 strength now the fatigue life it will be nearly infinite this gives us an idea that the higher the strength the fatigue life will be shorter if you want to use the strength gauge for infinite numbers of cycle make sure you limit it within 500 microsfarad on this basis you know that post use strength gauge should not be subjected to cycle loading why because the applied strength level will be more than this and it is nearly reaching to the strength limit